So hello everybody, I hope you enjoy your lunches. Um, my name is Peter and I work for Cake Solutions, a consultancy company focusing on building reactive and data processing applications using technologies such as, such as Scala, Akka, Spark and many others. In this presentation I won't talk about trends, this is prepared for next sessions, but I'm going to talk about distributed stream processing. Uh, this area attracts quite a lot of attention these days, and I believe you will find next 45 minutes interesting. So what am I going to talk about? I will start with a short introduction. What are the reasons behind this increasing demand for real-time data processing and how to address it? Uh, then I'm going to talk about stream processing in general. Why do we care? Why should we care? And what are the typical use cases we can expect? After that, I'd like to talk about available frameworks. What are the similarities and differences, and also their typical use cases? Finally, we will conclude with general guidelines and recommendations. I like to say this talk is based on my personal observation and opinions, and I'm definitely biased in some way. Huge amounts of data has to be processed fast from a rapidly growing set of display data sources like trade, uh, trading, social networks, IoT, system monitoring, and so on. And this pushes the limits of the traditional batch processing infrastructures, which are often simply not good enough. And stream processing might be a good way to go. We want to process incoming data on the fly, and we want to react to events as they occur as the latency really matters here. As you suspect, distributed stream processing is continuous, continuous processing aggregation and analysis of unmoded data. It is general computational model as MapReduce, but we expect uh, latencies in millis or in seconds. These systems are usually modeled as dialectic acyclic graphs, DAGs or DAGs. DAG is a graphical representation of chain of task and we use it for a description of streaming job. I will help myself with terminology from Akka Streams a little bit to make it more descriptive, but I'm sure it will be fine anyway. So, uh, as you can see in the picture, data flows through chain of processors from sources to things, and which represents the streaming task. And speaking about Akka Streams, I think it's very important to emphasize the word distributed, because even local solution can create an Akka DAC but we are going to focus only to solutions running on multiple machines. When choosing between different systems, there is a couple of points we should take care of. So let's start with runtime and programming model. The programming model provided by a platform determines a lot of its features, and it should be sufficient to handle all possible use cases for an application. This is a really crucial topic, and I will come back to it very soon. Uh, the functional primitives exposed by a framework should be, or should be pro able to provide rich functionalities at individual message levels like map or filter, which are pretty easy to um, implement even if you want to scale a lot. But it should also provide across messages functionality, like aggregations and across stream operations, like joint, for example, which are much harder to scale. And state management: most of applications have stateful processing logic the required maintaining the state. The platform should allow us to maintain access and update the state information. For message delivery guarantees, we have a couple of classes, like at most ones, at least ones, and exact ones, and an important thing to consider. Failures can and will happen at various levels, like network partitions, disk failures, or nodes going down, and so on. And our platform should be able to recover from all such failures and resume from their last successful state before harming the result. And then we have more performance-related requirements like latency, throughput, and scalability, which are extremely important in streaming applications. We should also take care of maturity and adoption level. This information could give us a clue about potential support, available libraries, or even stack overflow answers, and so on. And also, last but not least, the ease of development and ease of operability. It's great when we have like a super fancy flat platform which 
covers all the use cases, but if we cannot write a program for it, or if we cannot deploy it, we are done anyway. So let's talk about runtime and programming model, which is probably the most important trait of the system because it defines expressiveness, possible uh, operations, and future limitations. Therefore, it defines system capabilities and its use cases. There are two distinctive approaches how to implement streaming system. First one, the native streaming. It means only common records or events, if you want, are processed as they arrive, one by one. Second approach is called micro-batching. Short batches are created from incoming records and go through the system. These batches are created according to predefined time constant, typically every couple of seconds. Both approaches have inherent advantages and disadvantages. So let's start with native streaming. The great advantage of native streaming is its expressiveness. Because it takes a stream as it is, it's not limited by any amateur abstraction over it. Also, as the records are processed immediately upon arrival, achievable latencies of these systems are always better than its micro-batching companions. Apart from that, the stateful operations are much easier to implement, as you will see in the next couple of minutes. Native streaming systems have usually lower throughput, and fault tolerance is much more expensive as it has to take care of every single record. Also, load balancing is kind of issue. For example, uh, let's say we have a data partitioned by a key and we want to process it. If the processing of some key of the partition is more resource intensive for any reason, this partition quickly becomes job's bottleneck. <clears throat> Splitting streams into micro batches inevitably reduces system expressiveness. Some operations, especially state management or join and split, are much harder to implement as system has to manipulate the whole batch. Moreover, the batch interval connects two things or two words which should never be connected, an infrastructure property and a business logic. On the contrary, fault tolerance is much simpler as system just sends every, ba uh, every batch to work node, and if something goes wrong, it can just use a different one. Lastly, it's good to remark we can build but micro-batching micro system atop native streaming quite easily. Programming models can be classified as compositional and declarative. Compositional approach provides basic building blocks, like sources or operators, and they must be tied together in order to create expected topology. New components are usually defined by implementing some kind of interfaces. On the contrary, operators in the declarative API are defined as higher order function. It allows us to write functional code with all the fancy stuff we love, and the system creates and optimizes topology itself. Also, the Cartive APIs usually provide more advanced operations like windowing or state management out of the box. <clears throat> I'm going to show you some code samples very, very soon. There is a number of diverse frameworks available, and it's entirely impossible to cover them in just one session. So I have been forced it to limit it somehow, and I decided to go for popular streaming solutions from Apache Landscape. Therefore, we are going to focus on Apache Storm and its sibling Trident, and on streaming module of very popular Spark. We are also going to talk about streaming system behind LinkedIn named Samza, and we are going to discuss two promising Apache projects, Apex and Flink. I believe this is a great selection because even all of them are streaming systems, they do approach various challenges very differently. Unfortunately, I won't talk about proprietary streaming system like Google Millwheel or Amazon Kinesis. And also, we are going to miss interesting but still limited adopted system like my beloved Intel Gear Pump. So that may be for, for next time. Apache Storm was um, originally created by Nathan Marks and his team at Backtype in 2010. Later, it was acquired and open source by Twitter, and it became Apache Top Level Project in 2014. Before any doubts, Storm was a pioneer in large scale stream processing and became de facto industrial standard. Storm is a native streaming system and provides very low level API. Also, Storm uses thread for topology definition. Um, and it also implements stored mode to image protocol. And this basically allows us to implement our solution or our application in a large number of languages, which is pretty unique. And Scala is, of course, one of them. 
tried in its high-level micro-batching system, built atop Storm. It simplifies topology building process and also adds high-level operations like windowing, aggregation, or state management, which are not natively supported in Storm. In addition to Storm, Trident provides exactly one delivery. Trident has Java Clojure and Scala APIs. As we all know, Spark is a very popular batch processing framework these days, with a couple of building libraries like Spark SQL, MLlib, and of course, Spark Streaming. Spark Streaming is built for batch processing, and therefore Spark Streaming, as it was added a little bit later, does micro-batch. The stream of input data is ingested by receivers, which create micro-batches, and these micro-batches are pr processed in a similar way as other Spark jobs. Spark Streaming provides a high-level Decratic API in Scala, Java, and Python. Samza was originally developed in LinkedIn as a proprietary streaming solution, and with Kafka, which is another great LinkedIn contribution to our community, it became a key part of their infrastructure. As we are going to see a little bit later, Samza builds heavily on Kafka's talk-based philosophy, and both together integrates really well. And also Samza provides compositional API. Apex is a Hadoop-focused streaming system backed by Exahu engineers. Right now, it provides compositional API for Scala and Java. Um, but you can also use a visual tool to assemble application, which is kind of nice. Also, high-level APIs is under preparation slash construction. Apex also comes with a rich library of operators named Malhar. As I'm going to show you it a little bit later, Apex implements interesting compromise between native streaming and micro-batching. And the last but not least, Flink. Flink is a pretty old project. It has its origin in 2008, but right now it's getting quite a lot of attention. Flink is native streaming systems and provides high-level API. Flink also provides API for batch processing like Spark. But there is a fundamental distinction between those two. Flink handles batch as a special case of streaming. So basically everything is a stream, and this is, at least from my point of view, definitely a better abstraction because this is how the world really looks like. So there was a quick interaction of the systems, and as you can see on the table, they do have pretty different traits. And now it's, uh, let's take a look at code samples. And of course, nothing is more important than counting words. You know, word count is something like <coughs> hell word of data processing. So let's start with Storm. And please note, the example was simplified significantly. First, let's take a look at its topology definition. As you can see, we have to define a spot, or if you want, a source. And then there's a bot, a processing component, which splits text into the words. Then I have defined another bot for actual word count calculation. Also, take a look at, at the magic numbers, 5, 8, and 12. These are the paradigm hints, and they, de they define how many independent threads and other cluster will be used for execution of every single component. So as you can see, all is very manual and low level. Let's focus now how is the actual word count board implemented. As long as Storm does not have any support for many states, so I have defined a, a local state, which is far from being ideal, but good as a sample. Uh, apart from that, it's not very interesting. So let's move on and take a look at Trident. As I mentioned before, Trident is Storm micro-batching extension. And Trident, apart from many other goodies, provides data management, which is kind of useful when implementing word count. As you can see, I could use high-level operations like each and group by, so it is a little bit better. And also, I was able to use Trident many state for storing counts. And now is the time for a pretty decrypted API provided by Apache Spark. Also, keep, keep in mind, on the contrary to pr previous examples, which were really simplified, this is nearly all code you need to run this simple streaming word count. Every Spark streaming job requires streaming context, which is basically uh, an entry point to the streaming functionality. Streaming context takes a configuration, which is, as you can see, in our case, very limited. But more importantly, it defines its batch interval, which is set to one second. And now you can see whole word count computation. Apparently, it's a quite a difference. 
Uh, that's the reason why Spark is sometimes called distributed Scala. As you can see, it's quite standard functional code, and Spark takes care of um, topology definition and its distributed execution. And now, the last part of every Spark streaming job, start in the computation. Just keep in mind, one started job cannot be modified. And now let's take a look at Apache Samza, another representative of compositional API. The topology is defined in Samza's properties file, so you won't find it here, but for us it's important. Uh, the task has defined input and output channels, and communication goes through Kafka's topics. In our case, the whole topology is one count task, which does all the work. In Samza, components are defined by implementing some or some particular interfaces. In this case, it's a stream task, and I have just overridden method process. Its parameter list contains all what's need for connecting with the rest of the system. And the computation itself, just a simple scala. And now uh, it's time to take a look at Apache Apex. As you can see, it's a classic compositional API. And again, the snippet was simplified. Firstly, we have to define jobs topology. We have to add components to DAC and connect them with streams. And then just the definition of one of the components. This one splits incoming strings. Um, the code itself is pretty clear, I guess. And now let's take a look at Flank. As you can see, API is pretty similar to Spark streaming, but notice we are not setting any batch interval. Computation itself is pretty straightforward. There's just a couple of functional calls, and Flinks takes care of the rest. And now is the time to take a look at more interesting problems of stream processing, starting with fault tolerance. Fault tolerance in stream pro processing is inherently harder than in batch. Uh, when facing an error in batch processing system, we can just restart the first part of the computation and we are good. But this is much harder in streaming scenarios because data are still incoming and a lot of jobs can run 24-7. Another challenge we have to face is state consistency because in the end of the day, we have to start applying events and of course, not all state operations are very important. As you will see, fault tolerance can be pretty hard, so let's take a look how our system deals with that. Storm uses a mechanism of upstream backup and record acknowledgements to guarantee the messages are reprocessed after a failure. Acknowledgement work as follows. An operator sends back to the previous operator an acknowledgement that for every record that has been processed. And the source of the topology keeps a backup of all records it generates. Once received acknowledgement from all generated records under those things, backup can be discarded safely. At failure, if not all acknowledgements are collected or received, just a minute, uh, then the records are replaced by the source. This guarantees no data loss but does result in duplicate record passing through the system. That's at least one delivery. Store implements this with a clever mechanism of upstream backup and recovery, which requires only a couple of bytes of storage per source to track the records of the acknowledgements. Um, few record acknowledgement architectures, regardless of their performance, fail in offering exactly one's guarantees, thus burdening application developer with the duplication. Also, store mechanism is low throughput and has problems with flow control, as acknowledgement mechanism often falsely classifies failures under back pressure. Spark streaming and its micro-batching semantics follow a different approach. The idea is terribly simple. Spark processes micro-batches on various worker nodes, and each micro-batch may either succeed or fail. At a failure, the micro-batch can be simply recomputed, as they are all persistent and immutable. So exactly one delivery made easy. Samsung's approach is completely different. It takes an advantage of offset-based matching systems. It's usually or maybe of always Kafka, of course. 
And Samsung monitors offset of this task and smoothly when message is processed. Offsets can be checkpointed in a persistent storage and restored in case of failure. The problem is uh, when it restores offset from the last checkpoint, it does not have it does not know which upcoming messages were processed and it might do it twice. So that's at least one delivery for us. As we know, there are two distinctive approaches how to implement stream processing, the native streaming and the micro batch. Apex takes a little bit different, I would say a hybrid approach, which they call windowed stream real-time event processing. So what does it mean? Basically, Apex periodically sends some kind of markers named beacons through a stream, and they are used to track the process events in case of failure. It works quite well. It, it's efficient, it, and there is no artificial latency. But as you may see it in the picture, your application windows must be multiplies of these system windows, and it might be a limiting factor. Flink approach is based on distributed snapshot, which keeps the state of streaming job. And it's kind of similar to Apex. Flink's markers are called barriers and are sent through the stream. When barrier reaches an operator, operator checkpoints corresponding part of the stream. So if we compare it to Storm, it's far more efficient because it doesn't have to acknowledge every single record, but does it in small batches. But don't be confused, it's still native streaming. Conceptually, it is very different from Spark. Also, Flink's windowing is not um, affected or limited in any way. Lastly, both Apex and Plivac and Flink provides all their very guarantees. Most of non-trivial streaming applications have some kind of state. On the contrary of stateless operations, where we have just an input processing and an output, we have an input and a state, then we, then we do the processing and we have an output with a modified state. We have to manage our state, parses it, and in case of failure, we expect our state to be recreated. The recreation of the state might be a problem a little bit, as we do not, we do not have always exactly what guarantees. Some of the records may be replied multiple times, and that is not what we usually want. As we know, Storm provides at least one delivery guarantees, so how can we achieve exactly one semantics provided by Trident? Conceptually, it is quite simple. We just start committing records, but obviously it is not very efficient. So we start doing it in small batches, then do some optimizations, and here we are. Trident provides a couple of dedicated components for storing states, which can be accessed uh, by streams. It's not very convenient, but it's definitely usable. When thinking about stateful operations in stream processing, we usually have a long-running operator with a state and a stream of records coming through it. And as we know, Spark streaming is micro-batching system and is implemented very differently. Basically, Spark streaming manages the state as another micro-batch micro stream. So during processing of each micro batch, Spark takes the current state and a function representing the operation, and the result is processed micro batch and an updated stream. Some of the solution for everything is just push it out to Kafka and problem solved, and it also works in the context of state management. Samza has real state for operators, so any task can hold a state, and the state change log is pushed to Kafka. If needed, state can be easily recreated from Kafka's topics. To make it uh, a little bit faster, Samza allows us to plug in a key value store, store as a local storage, so it does not have to go to Kafka all the time. Unfortunately, Samza provides at least one semantics only, and it hurts a lot. But the implementation of exactly one delivery is planned. Apache Apex man maintains two types of states. Firstly, Apex gives us a fancy ability or fancy feature to change its topology dynamically on runtime. So it serializes and parses its DAC into a persistent storage, which is usually HDFS, but we can plug in something else. And apart from that, Apex provides both stateless and stateful operators. As you can see in the picture, Apex provides long-running operators 
And conceptually, it is very similar to Samza. And their stage is, of course, saved into a persistent storage. <coughs> Flink provides stateful operators like Samza or Apex. When working in Flink, we can use two different types of states. First one is a traditional local or task state, if you will. It's a current state of particle operator instance only, and these guys do not interact between each other. Apart from that, Flink provides partition or key state, if you will, which maintains state of whole partition. So let's take one more look how to count words, focusing on state management. Excuse me. So let's start with Trident. You may have seen a snippet already, as it is pretty similar as before. <coughs> we can create a state by calling persistent aggregate. Important argument is count, which is building component for storing numbers. As I said, if you would like to process data from it, or if you would have to, we would have to create a stream for that. Spark declarative approach is a little bit better. Firstly, we have to create RDD as an initial state. Then we have to define a transition function, which takes a word, its count, and the current state. The function does the computation, updates the state, and returns the result. Finally, we can put all bits together and get a state stream, which contains our word counts. So let's take a look at Samza. First, we need to define our state. In this case, it's key value stored. And I have just, um, and also we have to define how it should be initialized. And then we can use it during computation. As you can see, this is very straightforward. Apex snippet looks also similar as before. I have just added counter, a building component for counting words, which are received on its input ports. But I could also add a state for to any other component if needed. I think it's very simple. And finally, let's take a look at Flink. Flink provides very neat API. We just call a function with state, which takes as an argument function with two parameters. First one is a word to process, and second one is state. Function and returns process output and a new state. I really wanted to show you nice performance comparisons, but I will not. A reasonable comparison is a, is a topic maybe for a whole talk, so and I won't do it here, but a couple of guys did it already, and I'm happy to reference them. So for now, just in general. When we talk about performance in streaming, we mostly talk about latency and throughput. It depends on many variables, but in general and for a simple task, we can expect latencies in hundreds of, thousands, hundreds of thousands or even millions of records being processed per node per second. A uh, good thing is these systems have considerable horizontal scaling capabilities, so we can usually adjust performance according to our needs or according to our budget. For latency, in case of micro batch, we are usually thinking in seconds. In case of native streaming, we expect lat latencies in over hundreds of millis for most of the systems, but Dune Storm or Apex can operate in tens or under really good conditions, even in milliseconds. Also, it's important to keep in mind the cost of delivery guarantees, fault tolerance, and state management. For example, turning on fault tolerance may cost you like to 10 to 15%, but in case of Storm, it could be like 70% um, of your throughput. So, there is no free lunch, as always. And during the talk, I have shown you stateful and stateless word count examples. And of course, stateless will be faster. In case you are wondering how much, so in the context of Apache Flink, the difference was like 25%. But in case of uh, Spark, it was around 50%. I'm really sure it can be tuned, but it could give us an idea this is something what we should have in mind. And speaking about tuning, all systems have very rich tuning options, 
which may lead to significant performance gains. And you should always, really always, find some time to take a look at it. Also, it's important to have in mind all operations are distributed, and sending data through a network is, is pretty expensive. So try to take an advantage of data locality and also try to tune up your application serialization. Uh, there is a lot of to discuss about the performance. Hope I gave you basic ideas what to expect, but we have to move on. Uh, when picking up the framework for your application, you should always consider its maturity. So let's take a quick look how does it look our, in our cases. Storm was the first mainstream processing system and is used by many companies like Yahoo, Spotify, and many more. Spark is one of the most trending Scala repositories these days and one of the engines behind Scala's popularity. Spark's adoption grows every day. It's used by companies like Netflix, Cisco, Datastax, Intel, IBM, and so on. Samza is used by LinkedIn and also by tens of other companies. As an example, we can have Netflix or Uber. Although Apex graduated very recently, it has been adopted by a couple of corporate clients like Jeep, Harris Cloud, Capital One, or Silver Spring Networks. And I'm really sure more are coming. Flink is also an emerging project, but we can see its first production deployments. And again, I'm sure more will fall very soon. For example, I heard Amazon was evaluating it, and also Capital One was using it, and so on. So we have just finished basic comparison of chosen systems, which took me most of my time. Uh, we discussed how do they approach various challenges, which needs to be sorted out when implementing distributed stream processing system. Uh, you may take a quick look at a summary from, from my opinion and their key traits. And now is the time to move on and, and have a look at the last part of this talk, framework recommendations. I have to say, uh, this part is the most opinion-based by far, but I was really trying, to be fair. So let's move on. <laughs> the answer for a typical question, which one should I use or which one is the best, is as always depends. So in general, always try to evaluate requirements of your application carefully and be sure you fully understand the consequences of choosing particular framework. And try to fully understand its internals as improper use can have like disastrous consequences. <coughs> Uh, for programming model, uh, I think most of you guys would prefer high level API. It makes sense, you know, it's more elegant and it's more productive and so on. But on the other hand, high level APIs might hide a lot of its details. You will have to understand when you're, you and you, when you're, once you are facing an issue. And I have seen a lot of problems with that. So I would recommend following. If you want to do a lot of data science, analysis, or if you want to play with REPL, I think um, the high-level API is a great way to go. But if you expect more data-intensive operations, like crunching terabytes of blocks, or if you want to manage your DAG really precisely, compositional API might definitely make sense. So think it through what do you need and which approach will do best. I would also recommend go for a framework with all the very semantics available. As you usually don't want to limit yourself and, and especially if you are not sure what to expect. But of course there are definite use cases when at least once or at, last, at, um, at most once driver guarantees are all you need. Also keep in mind, which may be a little bit surprising, uh, system supporting exactly one delivery does not have to support weaker guarantees. Yes, I'm talking about Spark streaming. Mm. This point might be tied together with the previous one a little bit. Most of the streaming applications are stateful 
And as we have seen, this area might be quite challenging. So the state management of a particle framework should be really up on your evaluation list. Lastly, make sure your system is able to recover quickly. You can use Chaos Monkey or similar tool for testing, because as, the, as we have discussed, fast recovery is crucial in stream processing. Remember, data are still coming. And now let's take a look at uh, particle frameworks. Storm is uh, still a decent fit for small and fast tasks. If you care mainly about latency, Storm might be a good way to go. Also keep in mind the fault tolerance or try in state management hurts the performance a lot. Interesting option might be a potential update to Twitter Zero, which is designed as a Storm replacement and should be better in every single point but it also keeps the API. The problem is there's no guarantee that Twitter is going to open source it, so who knows if it is really a good idea. Uh, for Spark streaming, you should definitely at least try it if Spark is already part of your infrastructure, because in this case, streaming comes basically for free, and you can also take an advantage of various Spark libraries. Apart from that, there's a bunch of helpful tools available like REPL or Spark Notebook for data, data exploration, for example. You know, uh, Spark ecosystem is really huge and impressive, but you should always keep in mind its micro-batching limitations, which may really be, become a showstopper. And also be sure latency is not critical for you. <clears throat> when thinking about, about adopting SAMSA, uh, Kafka should be a cornerstone of your architecture. I know it's pluggable, but nearly everyone, or maybe everyone, is using Kafka, so I would stick with that. Also, as mentioned before, Samza is shipped with powerful, powerful local storage, and it's great for managing large states. It can handle states of tens of gigabytes easily, which is pretty nice. But keep in mind, Samza's at least one very limitation. Also, if you like Samza, you should also consider newly introduced Kafka streams, which offer similar functionality with nicer API and are operated by Kafka itself. So begin for operation as Kafka is basically all you need. If you prefer level slash compositional approach and you are also Hadoop positive, I believe Apex is or might be a great choice for you. It gives you a fine grain access to DAC, so you can get really most of it. Therefore, its performance, especially, especially achievable latencies, are truly excellent. Moreover, Apex allows us dynamic DAC changes, which is a very unique feature. As you see, Apex offers interesting options, which, as I believe, overweight is still emerging, but already graduated status. Flink is conceptually great streaming system, which fits very most use cases. And it often provides progressive functionality, like advanced windowing or time handling, which may not be supported or may not be implemented by its competitors. So you should always consider Flink when you need a functionality, which might be hard to implement in Spark or generally in any micro-batching system. Apart from that, Flink also has an API for, for common batch processing, which may be pretty useful. But you need to have enough courage to adopt emerging projects, and also, as always, do not forget to check out its roadmap. <clears throat> and last thing I want to mention today is Dataflow and its open source initiative. Dataflow is a part of Google Cloud Platform. And Cloud Platform has all sorts of things in it, as a, as a huge data storage, BigQuery, Cloud PubSub, and some tools for data analysis, and so on. And also aforementioned Cloud Dataflow. It is Google's managed service for batch and stream processing with unified API. And it's built upon well-known Google technologies such as um, 
MapReduce for batch processing, from, from Java for programming model definition, and MailWheel for stream processing. And all of them are really good. You may be asking why I'm talking about that. As I said, I will be speaking about, about open source framework, and this is clearly Google's proprietary solution. But Google decided to open source Dataflow SDK recently. And guys behind both Spark and Flink implemented its runners. So now we have an ability to run jobs defined by this Dataflow API in cloud platform, in Flink, or in Spark. And it is very probable more engines will follow very soon. So, and Dataflow provides API in Java and in Python, implemented by Google itself. And also, I have found a um, couple of SCAR DSLs already. Apart from that, Google and, and a number of partners submitted this as a new Apache proposal named Apache Beam. And I think Beam has a good chance to be unifying API that gives us a nice way to write once and run everywhere. But it's important to say all of, the, all of this is quite recent and the implementation of some of the promised, feature, promised features might be missing. But it is definitely worth to check it out. So now it's time for questions. Um, but you know, if there are any, let me know. But also I'll be somewhere around anyway and always happy to discuss various stuff, so just, just find me and let's have a chat. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope it was helpful for you. Also, we are hiring, so if you will want to join us, just follow the link. So that's all from me. Thank you very much.